What is cancer and how does it arise? This video explains the cause and effect of cancer on a cellular level. Cancer is essentially the result of mutation in certain genes that control the regulation of the cell cycle in our cells. Normally, our cells go through a cell cycle at a proper rate, performing various functions in different stages. In G1 and G2 phase, the cell grows and functions normally, while in S phase, the DNA of the cell replicates to get ready for mitosis. In mitosis, a sp cell splits into two nuclei, and in cytokinesis, the cell splits into two separate cells. In a normal, healthy cell, there is a time for each phase. For example, a cell enters mitosis and cytokinesis when its surrounding cells send paracrine signals to tell it to replicate to, in order to replace other cells. When the cell is not ready to enter the next phase, the cell cycle is paused by the cell cycle checkpoints. However, in a cancerous cell, the mutation in genes causes the cell to ignore the, the orders and signals telling the cell to stop, stop the cycle, therefore continuing the cell cycle and dividing indefinitely. So we know that when we get cancer, our cell behaves irregularly because it has mutations in genes. In other words, the coding of its behavior has gone wrong. But how do cancer cells get the mutation in genes in the first place? There are three major ways. First, mutations can be inherited from one's parents. When the sperm or egg cells of a parent of parents contain erroneous genes, the error gets passed down into the, to the offspring. In this situation, all of the cells in the person's body will have the same mutation since the DNA of all of the cells of this person were replicated from the parent cells that already contained errors. Mutations can also result from environmental exposure, such as radiation from sunlight. Lastly, mutations can happen because of miscopying of the DNA. In order to understand this, one has to first look at the process of DNA replication. DNA replication takes place in the S phase of the cell cycle. The process starts with the enzyme helicase unzipping the double helix of the DNA. As the hydrogen bonds between the nucleotide bases are broken, the DNA is separated into two strands. Although produced in slightly different ways, both strands rely on the D enzyme DNA polymerase to synthesize a new strand that might matches each of the two strands. When the two new strands are completely produced, the original double helix DNA has successfully copied itself and split into two. It is important to note that DNA pol polymerase adds 50 nucleotides every second, which is a really fast rate. At such speed, Errors can happen in DNA replication at a chance of about 1 in 10 billion nucleotides. A nucleotide is a combination of the deoxyribose de 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 sugar, a phosphate, and a nucleotide base. Each of the four possible bases has a matching base to pair with. When a base is aligned with a base that does not match it, a miscopying error occurs. Still, even with the error, one does not simply get cancer. The DNA polymerase has a proofread function that checks its work and fixes the error, which decreases the overall error rate. Furthermore, the proteins produced by the DNA repair genes are in charge of correcting the mistakes in DNA replication, which decreases the error rate even more. However, when the error does get past the checking mechanisms of the cell, the mistake stays, and as the error cell replicates, the mistake spreads. When the cell replicates, the mistake is no longer a detectable mismatch of the basis, but becomes an actual mutation. The more mutated cells there are, the higher the chance that one of them will get another mutation. The cells with the mutations are called the precancerous cells because the mutations are not yet cancer-causing, but make the person more prone to getting cancer. Eventually, when one cell collects enough mutation in genes to cause cancer, the single cancer cell escapes from the cell cycle regulation and replica replicates indefinitely, creating tumors. 
So when is a cancer cell actually cancerous? What kind of mutations will make a cell evade the cell cycle control? Normally, when a cell is mutated and thought as harmful by the cell cycle checkpoint mechanisms, the cell cycle is stopped, or the cell is ordered to commit suicide, a process called apoptosis. Cancer cells, on the other hand, develop the ability to dodge their death. In order to understand how they can do this, one has to look at the three main categories of genes in charge of regulating the cell cycle. They are proto-oncogenes, tumor suppressor genes, and DNA repair genes. The functions of those genes can be best understood when put in parallel with the car analogy. A properly working car needs the gas pedal to drive, needs a brake to stop, and would need occasional stops to the car repair place to make sure the first two functions work. The same thing goes for the cell cycle. Proto-oncogenes are like the gas pedal, which stimulates the rate of the cell cycle, encouraging division when needed. A tumor suppressor gene is like a brake that slows down the rate of cell division. A DNA repair gene repairs errors in DNA copying to prevent mutations. A mutated proto-oncogene becomes an on oncogene, which does not listen to the signals for division anymore, but instead speeds up the cell cycle all the time. When the tumor suppressor gene is mutated, the cell cycle won't be able to stop. When the repair gene is mutated, not only errors won't be corrected, but more errors might arise because of the wrong way the repair mechanism is trying to correct the DNA. When one or two of the three categories of regulate, regulatory genes are mutated, one might still not get cancer because the remaining functional genes struggle to maintain the cell cycle. However, when all three are dysfunctional, the cells go out of the control and have the potential to divide indefinitely, ignoring the cell cycle. Let's look at an example in how a cancer cell goes out of control. Here is a diagram of a skin cell undergoing cell cycle. The skin cell would try to divide under certain circumstances, such as when its neighbor cells are damaged and need to be refilled. The process starts with a paracrine signal from the cell's surrounding cells. The signal is a part of the signal transduction pathway, where a response can be triggered. In this case, cell division, where the receptors on the cell membrane receives the signal. On the cell membrane, an initial growth factor from nearby cells acts as a ligand to trigger the G-protein receptor, which phosphorylates and activates the protein RAS. RAS is considered a proto-oncogene, the gas pedal of the cell cycle, because it goes on to activate RAF, starting an entire protein kinase cascade. RAF, as a kinase, activates another kinase called MEK, which activates another kinase called MAPK. Each step of the activation amplifies the signal of the division, because as one enzyme is activated, it goes on to activate a second enzyme, at the same time, the original enzyme can keep working as well, since enzymes do not change after a reaction. MAPK is a transcription factor for cycling, which means that it enters the nucleus of the cell, locates and promotes the genes specifically in charge of producing cycling to actually produce cycling. Cycling binds to CDK to form a complex that opens the active site on CDK for RB. RB is a tumor suppressor gene protein that binds to E2F. When RB binds to CDK, it releases E2F, which, as a transcription factor of various enzymes in charge of DNA replication, such as DNA polymerase and helicase, travels to the nucleus, initiates the production of these enzymes, and triggers DNA replication of the cell. In the cancerous cell, its proto-oncogenes are mutated into oncogenes. RAS, for example, might remain active forever after being activated by the receptor. This is problematic because then RAF would be constantly activated as well, and the entire protein cascade is no longer controlled by the initial signal. This cell would, ha would have been fine if it has a functional P21, whose role is to slow down the cell cycle as a tumor suppressor by binding to CDK and preventing it to form complex with cycling. 
However, a cancerous cell has mutated tumor suppressor genes too, which means which means that either p twenty one itself is dysfunctional, or its transcription factor p fifty three is unable to cause the production of p twenty one. Without a break and always going full power, the cell divides and divides, creating more and more cancerous cells. Henrietta Lacks, the donor behind the famous HeLa cells, had cerv cervical cancer as the cause of her death. Although the mystery regarding the immortality of the HeLa cells remains unclear, the cause of Henrietta's cervical cancer had gradually been uncovered years after her death. Cervical cancer, it turned out, is one of the cancers that are caused by viruses. HPV is a virus that can produce two viral proteins, E6 and E7. When infected with HPV, a female can have her cervix cells exposed to those two cancer-causing proteins. E6 causes p53 to become inactive, which disables the break function of the cell cycle. E7 binds to the tumor suppressor gene, uh, the tumor suppressor protein Rb, and cuts off its bond with E2F. This causes the release of E2F and the trigger of cell division, even without a signal and a corresponding protein cascade. With the two proteins, HPV manages to both mutate the gas and the break of the cell cycle, leading the cells towards a cancerous state. And that's why the tumor started to grow on Henrietta's cervix. According to the book, Henrietta accepted radiotherapy at the Hopkins hospitals. The exposure to radiation did not treat her cancer. Radiotherapy originates from the fact that radiation can cause mutation in genes. Ideally, radiotherapy would add more mutations to the cancerous cells that the can that the cells are led into thinking that they're too damaged. And need to commit suicide or apoptosis, which eliminates the cancerous cells. Unfortunately for Henrietta, her cancerous cells will never perform apoptosis because the protein in charge of the process, p53, is already mutated by the E6 protein of HPV. Radiation didn't help in curing her cancer, but may have harmed her body even more. This shows the importance of understanding what's actually going on behind the disease before jumping to treatment, and the importance of understanding why specific mutations are responsible for different kinds of cancers.